with our defensive coordinator and inside linebackers coach, Peter Sermon. Go ahead and let me know in the chat if you have questions for Pete, and we'll get started. We'll go ahead and get started with uh, Jeff Ferrado from Cal Sports Report. Hi, Peter. Um, we talked with you about um, uh, Romeo Dubs, their, their receiver number seven, uh, last weekend. Um, I've noticed that looking at how his season last year went, he just tore everybody up early in the year, and then late um, – it seemed like he wasn't quite as productive. Was there something that you noticed that people were doing to, to take him out a little bit more, or is that just what happens in games or what? Well, I think there's always the kind of the ebb and the flow uh, within the season. Um, you know, it's uh, as, as you get more targets, like anything, you know, some things are designed um, specifically to, to try to find where you're at and, and to support some of the guys on defense. Um, but, you know, that's where, you know, 19, you know, uh, shows up and there becomes a pretty good distribution. I think when I looked at the um, at the statistics, I think there were six players that had over uh, 20 receptions. So uh, that's a, that's a pretty good distribution. I mean, the running backs by themselves, I think, are uh, the position uh, had, uh, you know, roughly 48 catches. So I think uh, the quarterback, Carson Strong, did a nice job of distributing the ball. And uh, as you watch film. You know, uh, Dubs is a very, very talented player, but it also looks like uh, the quarterback's going through some progressions and um, I guess um, taking what the defense gives you in a sense. So trying to take him away doesn't solve the whole problem. No, I mean, they, uh, I think this is going to be a very, very talented group coming in. And this is that uh, uh, they can go all the way across the board with, with side uh, number four. Um, Elijah does a nice job with his body. I know he um, didn't play very much last year due to some injury, uh, but Stovall, number one, does another, a, a good job. Uh, number 20 is a, a, you know, guys that can return some kicks. So he's an elusive player too. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Trace Travers from Rivals. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned number 19, uh, Turner, their tight end. Do you see him more as an inline guy or someone they split out to take advantage of some of those matchups? Well, he, he does a little bit of both. There is some, uh, there is some film of him uh, playing some inline tight end. Uh, I think the strength of, of, of what he did last season um, was being a guy that was flexed out. Uh, the size creates some mismatch issues. And then uh, the quarterback does a great job of, of throwing him open. There's some... Um, really nicely placed balls for him uh, in the middle part of the field that, that he did a really good job with some body control and, and, and tracking those. Um, but, you know, I can imagine, you know, a, a person of that stature, you know, always continuing to develop, you know, some of the inline blocking skills. So uh, we're prepared uh, for a tight end. You know, they list him as a tight end to, to do some tight end things, but we also watch the film and understand that uh, he's a significant part of their pass game. And when we talked to Cam Good yesterday, he mentioned that some of their pistol looks are more of a run tell as opposed to a pass tell. Is that something you've seen or what, how do they use their pistol? Well, I don't, I, we haven't really gone in uh, on the scouting part of, uh, you know, what we're talking about or what we're doing on the, in the interviews here off the pistol. Uh, but, you know, the, try. Pistol, the, the pistol, you know, has been uh, pretty well documented for, for the, um, the advantages uh, of getting some of the downhill uh, run game, uh, which I think complements their, uh, their running style, the running backs they have on their roster. Um, college football, so much of, uh, of the defenses are built off of the offset backs. So obviously with, with the pistol or um, just traditional uh, quarterback under center, which we call dot. Um, those are both eliminate, you know, some of the some of the pre-snap or some of the alignment variations that the defensive line um, is available to use, um, and it becomes you're uh, you're playing more of a fair fight in terms of, of the flow of the ball. Cool. Thank you. Hey, uh, we got Jim McGill from Bear Insider. Coach, you had to have a knot in the pit of your stomach when when Brett went down with injury in the spring, being such a dominant defensive line player, but obviously you didn't know Luke would be coming in. How happy are you with the, the transition the, the defensive line has made without him there? And how confident are you in the ability of the line to put pressure on strong, which would seem to be one of the keys to this game? Yeah, losing, uh, you know, not having Brett available, um, you know, that's uh, anytime that, 
we have a member of our team that's, that's unable to participate for any reason. You know, we, we feel for them because it's uh, such a uh, important time uh, for those young men in, in, the, in the brief window that some of the college uh, athletes have. Uh, getting Luke back has been a, um, a great blessing. You know, he's really um, assimilated, you know, uh, as well as you would uh, imagine coming right back into the fold, has a great relationship with Coach Browning. I think through the recruiting process and through the development process, we're going to have some younger, inexperienced players uh, really get their first opportunity for significant playing time. And I'm excited to see them. I think Coach Browning and the, and the whole staff, we've done a nice job of identifying players, uh, the defensive line position that we feel uh, fit our system well. And now it's time to, to grow up. We're very excited about um, Luke, you know, and then uh, J.H. Tevis is a, is a player that I want to make sure that uh, I never forget to mention. He's a, uh, he's a gritty, grimy player. He's uh, a playmaker of that position. Uh, he can slip off some blocks. He's very uh, instinctual on, on how he plays the run game. So, um, you know, really great that, that he's continuing to develop. But there's going to be a lot of young guys playing, and uh, it will be great to see them get their first um, significant action and uh, kind of go through that development of transitioning from practice to, you know, to the game and, and then be able to um, understand and be able to kind of work through some of the adjustments and some of those uh, fatigue and, and some of those things that, that you can't really replicate on the practice field. Up the middle are Korea and Maldonado down on the depth chart, mainly because of health or those guys too, that you expect to be really in the mix as the year goes on. We expect both those guys to be in the mix. You know, the, the depth chart um, is a, you know, is a kind of a, a starting point. You know, we, we've uh, in the past, we've utilized some players in some unique positions here at the defensive line and understanding that, you know, um, everything is a, for us, everything is about development. So, you know, the, the starting point for where some of those guys are in the depth chart, I don't think will be a, a fair indication of, of what their significance and their contribution is going to be to the game. And just shifting a linebacker, obviously you're loaded on the outside too deep with guys that um, seem to really have the ability to get it done. But inside, a little bit unproven. You've got uh, you've got Tattersall and Iosefa who who played a bit last year, and you've got some green guys behind them. Can you talk a little bit about up the middle? Yeah, you know, so the guys that uh, you know that are that are listed in the two deep um, with with Evan and Trey, uh, Nate Ruchina uh, being the third one we listed there, and then. Uh, Muelu, Kyle, and then uh, Femi. Um, so, like you said, there's some there's some guys that have had some brief uh, stints of playing. Um, you know, I, it wouldn't surprise me if I play you know up to four guys on Saturday. You know, so I think again, it's going to be um, the first action. You know, doing a nice job of of making sure that these guys are fresh, continue to develop and identify players that that we think are going to be. Uh, able to help us win uh, games throughout the season. Thanks. Hey, anybody else have a final question? Give you three or four seconds here. To... Hey, it looks like no further questions.